So as you know, we're not going to be developing our own 3D models in this game. We're using a set of prefab, as in pre-made modular mod models. And before we even get that far, though, we're going to do a little bit of what we call white boxing. Now, white boxing is about laying out your level beforehand by using primitive shapes or other white boxing tools. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. It's fairly simple. To add a new primitive shape to the screen, we're going to go to the new scene view here, or whatever scene you're in, and right click and choose 3D object, and then choose cube. And what it's going to do is just place a cube in your screen, and you can scroll in to get closer, or use the right mouse button to look around. You can also use the Alt button. So I like to use the Alt button here instead of this uh, mouse button. So when you use the Alt button, it's going to uh, lock onto your object. So you can see this is my mouse, and this is the Alt button. So it just nicely centers things. Okay, so the other thing is, is when you've lost your cube on the screen here, and you're like, where did my cube go? You can click on it here, click twice to recenter it. All right, so we've lost it here. Maybe we're way over here somewhere. We just click twice, it will bring us back to our cube. And we can also click on it and push the F key to highlight it in the inspector here, or the hierarchy by clicking F. And then if we put our pointer in the screen. So let's go over here. We're on the cube. We've got our mouse in the screen. If we push F, F for find, it will bring us back to our cube. So I'm way over here. I've selected the cube. I've got my mouse in the scene. Push F to find. Okay. So again, when I first started, this was the most difficult thing I had, was learning how to just sort of manage things in 3D space. But it, it gets easier after a while. So the next thing we're going to want to do is I'm actually just going to use this cube and make it into a ground that we could potentially walk on. So we can rename our cube, and I really suggest you rename things well so that you know what they are. And I'm going to call this floor. And don't forget to push enter after, or it won't change. And then, and then what we're going to do is scale this to uh, a different shape, or a different scale, really. So we have the X, Y, and Z axis, and you can see them up here on our little uh, gizmo. So Y is up, Z is long, and X would be towards us, just in a simple language here. But it's easiest just to see it by doing it. And so I'm going to grab the scale and say give X 10 instead of 1. And you can see it grows along the x-axis. Give y, I'm just going to give it 0 0.1, because it's just a thin floor. And z, I'm going to give it 10. So now what we've done is stretched out this cube into, essentially, a floor. And we can position this on the screen just by grabbing one of these colored arrows and dragging it into position, such as this. I'm going to click Alt and get a better view, drag it around. Now, when you're starting new objects in the scene, it's always best to zero them out. You'll hear people sing this a lot. Don't forget to zero it out. And what this means is to take the position in space in the X, Y, Z position and say 0, 0, 0. So this is just so we can easily find it in our scene because it's all set to 0, 0, 0. So for example, if we were to take this floor and say control D for duplicate, so now we have a floor in floor one, and I drag it up along the Y axis, boop, 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 you can see the Y axis over here in the transform getting higher as I move it away. So this is how we know what position something is relative to another object. So zero, zero is here. We can see 1, 1, so let's set this to 2. So now it's 2 above, and let's say we wanted it to set x by 2. It would move us over slightly. 
Now, if we wanted to move it the other way, we would set this to negative 2. Or if we wanted to set this below, we'd set it to negative 2. So let's just delete our second floor for now. And really, I suggest you take some time and play around with this. This is very key stuff. You're going to be using this a lot. So the next thing I'm going to do is just make a, another 3D object. I'll make another cube. And it's set to 0, 0, 0, which is right in the floor. And I can just move this up a bit. So I'm not going to be too precise. I just want to place these where I want to place these. So I'm just going to drag it around, for example, and place it here. Push Control D to make another one. Control D. Control D, Control D, and so on and so forth. So we can just keep doing this and, for example, block out where we would want our walls to be. So this is essentially what people call white boxing. So this is very simple white boxing. Now there are other primitive shapes that we can use. So we have the sphere, which is a round circle-y shape in 3D. We have the capsule, which is sort of an oblong sphere. We have the cylinder, which is similar to the capsule with flat ends. We have a plane. A plane is essentially a floor, or it's often used for floors. What's different than a plane in a cube, though, is a plane only has one side. So you can see we can look through the plane on this side where the cube has uh, materials on all the sides, where a plane only has one face, so there's no depth to it. We also have a uh, quad, which we're really not going to get into. It's uh, not that important for now. And uh, I think that's it for our basic primitives. So we have other things like terrain, ragdolls, trees, but we're not going to get into that for now. So these are our basic shapes, and we really can um, change the size of them and mess around with them. So for example, let's delete a couple of these cubes. And let's grab this one here. And there's other ways to resize them. We could use the uh, scale tool. It's this one here. To scale it now, we just grab the ends and drag them out. This is a little less precise, but it does work. And there, now we have another wall. So for our game, we won't white box out too much with primitive shapes, but we'll end up white boxing by using floor tiles and some other kinds of tiles, and we'll get there. But it's really important that you learn how to manipulate these primitive shapes so that you can use more complicated shapes. Now, one thing that we did not cover here is the fact of rotation. Not only these shapes can uh, change size and position, but also rotation. So you can use the rotate here, and you can rotate around the uh, each axis is col colored, such as this rotate this way and you can just rotate it however you want now an easier way to rotate things I'm gonna set it back to zero 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 I find a much easier way to rotate things is just by using the numbers so if I want to rotate on the X I can either type a number such as like 90 or we can actually click on the X and just drag it and as you watch the screen you can see that it's rotating So all of these values can be manipulated just by clicking on the X, Y, or Z and dragging them around. Okay, before we jump out of this section, we're going to talk about two more things. One is uh, vertex snapping, and the other is... Well, let's talk about vertex snapping and general snapping. I think that's a good place to start. 
So as you probably noticed right away, it's, it's sort of a pain in the butt to get everything in line nicely. And so we need a nice easy way to do that. And Unity does come with something called snapping. And you're going to find it under edit, snap settings. And I'm going to set my snap settings to move to X is 1, move Y is 25, and move Z as one and click snap all axis. Now what this is gonna do is when we move things along the X axis and hold control I believe, it will snap to that position. And so let's take a look at how that works. So we're gonna add a cube and just move this cube up. I'm gonna duplicate the cube. So right now it looks just like one cube because they're on top of each other. But if I hold control and drag it, it will snap, as you can see, one position over. So since the cube size is one and we're snapping by one, they will be right next to each other. You can duplicate this one, hold control and snap this way. Duplicate again, hold control, and snap over here, just like this. Now, this works great when objects are one by one size or have been developed to be the right size, but you're going to find lots of prefabs we're using do not snap well together because they don't fit a specific size. And to show you how to deal with that, we're going to use something called vertex snapping. And vertex snapping is actually pretty easy to use. And you see these green lines here and the uh, orange ones, or slightly red. These are the vertex where these two lines meet the point. And we, what we want to do is grab this point and match it to that point. So to do that, I click on the object, push and hold down V. V for vertex, and it will allow me to select vertex, even the ones on the other side of the object. So I'm going to grab the front corner, click and drag while holding V to match the vertex on this object. So now I'm going to push F to zoom in, to find, or focus, and now you can see they're snapped together correctly. So again, I'll click this object, push and hold down V, choose the corner, click that, and drag it to this vertex. And you can see they snap together. Now I let go of my mouse, let go of my V, and there it is. So I'm going to push F to focus. And now we've got them snapped together nicely. So you're going to end up using this a lot in this tutorial, so we'll, we'll cover this again, but that's vertex snapping. And those are the two major ways of snapping.